Jason. Hello, fellow Tedsters. All righty here. So I have a little bit of something different planned today. I was always told when I was little not to play with food. Most people are told not to play with food. But then I made a career out of playing with food. So today we're going to ignore everything we've ever learned, and we're going to play with food. We're going to play with food just like the animals do, just like the zoo animals do. And zoos have changed actually a lot over the years. It used to be that um, zoos were kind of a menagerie of animals. And they were, the, they were basically the circus freaks of the animal world. And so they were trained to do tricks for the public, for our entertainment. And then over the years, gradually started, uh, people started to think of conservation and education. And uh, they started to display animals in a little bit of a different way. We started looking at their natural habitats. We wanted them shown in their nat natural habitats. And we wanted also to show their natural behaviors. And so, uh, around the 1970s, the care of zoo animals really improved because we started to think about not only their physical health, but also their psychological health as well. And the term enrichment was coined in the 1970s, and it was defined as a process for improving or enhancing animal environments and care to draw out their species-appropriate behaviors and abilities. Uh, it was basically just we wanted to give animals the opportunity to do things that they would normally do in the wild. So if an animal likes to look for food for a long time in the wild, then we wanted to keep them busy in captivity. If they spent time climbing trees in the wild, then we wanted to give them the opportunity to climb trees. So all different types of behavioral enrichment uh, came to be. And they all have to be tested because they're not appropriate for all animals. And so today we're going to have a little activity, and I need my volunteers. They were chosen before. Volunteers, you're holding a yellow card with a number on it, and you should come up now anytime. Anytime. Volunteers. <laughs> I believe I have some volunteers. Great. Come on up here. Come on up these stairs. It's fun. You get prizes. It's good. Come on down. Come on down. You're the next contestant. Come on. That's it. Round of applause, because this is very frightening, right? I, you never know what I'm going to make them do, right? It's an animal thing. Come on. So if you have a number one, please come to the number one activity station. If you have a number two, please come to the number two activity station. And this is number three, and that is number four. OK, these are our zoo animals, all right? <laughs> Hi. These are our zoo animals, and we're going to test a, a few different types of behavioral enrichment with them. All right? So, and we're going to see if it works. Now, behavioral enrichment doesn't always involve food, but we are all very highly motivated by food as animals. I had a really good lunch today, and I think I would have worked for that. And uh, so zoo animals are no different. And so what we do is we have them uh, perform behaviors for, for food. Now, this is going to be our food today. So once you find a pink card, you are going to get a prize. It pays to be a volunteer, okay? So you're going to get a prize. So this is your food, all right? Does everybody got that? Pink card, food, great. Once you find that, you get a prize, as soon as you find that. Now I'm going to go to my first team here. Okay, come, are you number one as well? Come, come up here. Okay, this is so exciting. I've never done this before. All right. <laughs> all right, so you're number one. All right, and this is going to be your station. Are you ready to find your food? Yeah. You're ready, are you sure? Are you excited? Yes. Okay, ready? Yes. One, two, three. That wasn't very exciting. Okay, that's because you are demonstrating what we call uh, a control, uh, you're a control group, okay? And that means we need to know what it, how long it takes for an animal to eat its food when it's not getting any behavioral enrichment. So you actually didn't get any behavioral enrichment, so you're done, you get a prize right now. Okay, so the two of you can just go off and get your prize. <laughs> See how easy it is? It's so easy to be a volunteer. All right, now what if, imagine that that was an animal that spends 10 or 12 hours a day looking for food in the wild. What are they gonna do? They don't plurk, they don't tweet, they're stuck, they have nothing to do. So they're gonna look for something to do. Now they can either be completely inactive, which isn't very physically uh, healthy for them, or they can start to uh, perform an abnormal repetitive behavior. And I've got a video of that right here. And these abnormal repetitive behaviors are also called stereotypic behaviors, and they're things that animals do just to soothe them. 
okay? Just to calm them down. So you can kind of picture it like you're rocking a baby to sleep, okay? And it's very soothing and it's repetitive, okay? And animals, if they're frustrated or even just bored, they're going to look for something like this to do. Some of them aren't very appetizing, so it's not something we really want visitors to see. And um, yeah, that's a certain, a, an interesting way of playing with your food. So um, what we want to do is prevent these behaviors from happening. Because once an animal starts doing this, they actually get a drug uh, like a feel-good hormone that's released, and so it's a drug to them. So it really feels good to actually do something like this. So we want to prevent that, and we're going to be proactive. We're going to go to our second group here and find some behavioral enrichment that works. So you actually get behavioral enrichment. Because this was pretty sad, really. All right, so you get behavioral enrichment. Are you ready? You're both number two? Okay. Ah! That wasn't a mistake. I did it on purpose, but actually it's going to be very exciting for you. Because you are going to, uh, you're going to show us scatter feeding, okay? Scatter feeding is when I take your food, remember your food, I take your food and I just hide it somewhere in this room. Somewhere in this room I've hidden your food, all right? So you now have to go and look for your food. This is your food. This is your food. You have to go and look for your food. Is there a TEDx representative that can help them, that can supervise them? Yes. I believe there's probably a TEDx representative that will help you because they need supervision, okay, to keep them safe. They need a zookeeper. So you go off there to the side there, and someone will help you. Now, your TEDx representative, remember, I've hidden it somewhere in this room. I'm not telling you where, and your TEDx rep doesn't know where. I'll come back to them later. All right, so that is scatter feeding. Now the next type of behavioral enrichment we're going to look at are puzzle boxes. Who's number three? Who gets the present? Both of you, come here. Come here. Oh, presents. Okay, so all you have to do is open the presents. Sound easy enough? Is it easy? Are you ready? Okay, okay, are you ready? You ready to go? You're not ready. You know why you're not ready? Because you have these. You have opposable thumbs, and I don't think that's fair. I don't think that's fair because a lot of animals don't have opposable thumbs. So I think that you need to be an animal. <laughs> so if you would, wouldn't mind just slipping your hands into these. Okay. And, uh, and, and you too, please. Okay, just put your hands in there. All right, there we go. And these, these are your beaks. All right. Have at it. Enjoy. All right, so you just have to get in there. You better start because there's a time limit here if you haven't noticed. All right, that's it. Yeah, get in there. Get in there. Work it, both of you, together. Together, this is teamwork. Oh my goodness. We can be... I have 12 minutes, people. Okay. The next form of behavioral enrichment that we're going to look at is a pinata. Who doesn't love a pinata? Okay. So I need my TEDx volunteer, a TEDx volunteer to come on the stage. A pinata holder. Who is a pinata holder? Anyone? Come on, over here, oh good. Okay, if you could pick up the pinata. Oh, this is so dangerous, I love it. All right, so you are going to, it was paper, scissors? Okay, so you are gonna hold the pinata, and you too, you know what to do with a pinata? You just beat it until something falls out. Okay, you hit it, you hit the pinata, and I have weapons for you. Okay. Oh, okay, wait, just a second, just a second! <laughs> TEDx assumes no responsibility for any injuries you may incur. All right, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I should have got goggles or something, I'm kind of afraid. All right, now, what does this have to do with zoo animals? How are you doing? You very good. My goodness, it's gonna take a while. <laughs> okay, so, um, if you have an animal that likes to spend a lot of time looking for food in the wild, that's the moose. They like to have a leaf here, a twig there. It's supposed to happen. See, those cameras are expensive. All right, be careful now. Keep beating it. Did anything come out? Nothing came out. Get your food. Beat it. Beat it. As Michael Jackson said, beat it. Okay. Now, 
The moose is a good for scatter feeding. And we can also have it more natural behaviors. We can put sticks and twigs around their exhibit so they can look for it. But scatter feeding is also good for kebabs. Okay, we can take kebabs. And Janet was telling us about a new kind of kebab, a chicken butt kebab, which I've never used before. But you can make kebabs for small animals. You can make them for large animals. And basically, you just skewer food, put it all over the exhibit. And I think our animals might have gotten some treats here. And you can also encourage natural behaviors with scatter feeding. So if you, oh, I really hope I put it in there. If you, uh, if you put food up in a tree, you, you did, you've almost got it. Oh, I'm sure you had a crazy aunt or uncle who used to do this. Okay, you got it. Okay, go get your prize, go get your prize. Excellent. Good, good. Okay, I was really worried somebody was going to get hurt with that. All right, they're doing good. Where's my scatter feeding? Where are, where's my first team? Are they out here somewhere? Say, hey. Okay, <laughs> okay. If you might want to move to, to that side, actually, a little bit farther over there, be good. Okay, if you want that, it's kind of, I'm just giving you a hint. I'm helping you because this team, yeah, I'm helping you. So move over <laughs> to that side. All right, so we can encourage natural behaviors with scatter feeding too. If we want an animal to climb a tree, then we just put the food up in a tree and then it can climb a tree to get it, right? Or it, this is my favorite. If we want an animal to jump, then we can take a chicken. Okay, imagine this is a huge cougar exhibit. We take a chicken, we put it on a zip line, we whip it across the stage. What's the cougar gonna do? It's gonna jump for it. It's gonna jump like it's catching a bird out of the sky. So those are really cool behaviors that it's fun to see in a zoo, and it keeps them from doing anything that we don't want them to do in the zoo. So finally, we have our puzzle feeder here. And uh, yeah, they're, they're working on it. Puzzle feeders are great for animals that uh, are, maybe in the wild, they, they look for insects and rotten logs, or maybe <laughs> primates. Maybe primates who are very smart, so we want to challenge their cognitive abilities. Or, uh, and, these, and primates are good because they also use tools. Tools, sometimes primates use tools really well, sometimes they don't. But um, this, we've got a chimpanzee here that's showing different tool use. So there's one that's got, found some straw or some grass in his exhibit, and basically he's sticking it into a hole of a puzzle feeder, and he's pulling out some honey or some peanut butter or something like that. And the one next to him has a really simple, yay! Oh, thank God. Okay, you go get your prize, you deserve it, you deserve it. You, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Okay, so that was, a really, that was a really interesting puzzle feeder, but we can have them really simple, okay? This chimpanzee is just carrying around some socks, and there's food inside. And if we tie some knots on the socks, then it's that much faster. Pinatas, as you saw, we can use them with carnivores, so they can look like prey items, and they can stalk their prey and then kill it. And that's always fun. And another ice treat, which I have to talk to Alice about her car, because maybe this would, that would make it easier for us, um, it's basically a popsicle. So we put all their food in water, stick it in the freezer, and then, uh, and then we give them a big ice cube. And we can have uh, polar bears that are swimming like that. Now, my scatter feeding group, they don't seem to be very successful, so please come back on the stage, scatter feeding group, team number one. Our poor animals, hungry, hungry animals out there. And they need to come back on the stage, just run. Run wherever you are on the back of the stage. So in order for behavioral enrichment to be uh, successful, it has to be species appropriate. If you give a porcupine a balloon, it's not going to last very long. So we need something that works for every animal. And we want to enhance natural behaviors. We have to think about those natural behaviors. If we want an animal to climb a tree, we can't put the food on the ground. And it has to be a lot of variety, okay? Because animals get bored easy. So even if we find something that works, we need to change it up. It can't be the same thing every day. You can't give them everything all at once. And you lost someone. That's so sad. It happens sometimes <laughs> that they get lost in their exhibit and you just don't see them for days. So the other thing is, come. Come up here. Okay, the other thing is, sometimes you can keep an animal active even when you haven't provided them with any behavioral enrichment at all, okay? So if I, have, if I scattered food around your exhibit and you went looking for it and you found food on one day, 
then the next day, I don't have to hide any food because you would just look anyway, right? Because you're used to it. So when I said that this is your food, yeah, I meant this is your food. I never hid it anywhere. I never put it anywhere. Okay, so there you go. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. It really wasn't fair, but it was a good point. You get your, yes, you get your prize now, but you lost your friends, so you get all the prizes. <laughs> so I hope I showed you a little bit about how we care for zoo animals and um, all of these principles you can use with your pets at home too to enhance their lives because we know that they do enrich ours. So thank you very much for playing.